public about the honeybees, one of the things that we do is we go and we do festivals. And yesterday we did a festival in Warwick, New York, and we took here our observation hive. And this is an observation hive, and this allows the opportunity for the public to be able to see the honeybees hard at work. This is a frame of frozen honey that I had from last year that I saved, and this here is the hive. Uh, this is one single frame out of the hive, and the hive is here. The girls are still gathering pollen and bringing it in, but the important thing is that these girls are going a little crazy because inside this box we have the queen. And if you look there, the queen is the one that's marked with the green dot. She's walking around there. She's looking. And she needs to come out, so we're going to be taking her out of here and putting her back into the hive that's located there. She's been out for 24 hours, and now she needs to go back in because the girls are wondering, where's our mama? Mama's not home. We need her back. The queen is responsible for laying the eggs, and during the months of March 15th through July 15th, she lays approximately 2,000 eggs per day, and at this time of the year, her egg production goes down, but she still does need to produce bees until November, and those bees that she bears via laying eggs inside these cells here will hatch out and those bees will last until the early spring. An average bee during the summer months lasts six weeks its lifespan is, but in the winter time that same bee will live up to four months long. You wonder why she has a green dot? Well, it's a green dot because she's easily identifiable for us when we're looking in a hive. That, in the height of the season, has 60,000 plus bees in it. To locate the queen can sometimes be an arduous task. So we mark the queen, and every year the color of the queen marking changes. This year the international color is fluorescent green, and next year that color will be red. The reason we mark the queen with a color from year to year is so that we can easily locate her in the hive, and in the event that she dies over the season and a new queen is created by the hive, and it's not marked in the hive and we can't find the marked queen we had, we'll have an understanding that the hive has been superseded with a new queen and then we'll hunt that queen out and we will mark her with the according color for the year. If we come back in the spring and that queen is still there with the green marking, we'll know that she's a queen from 2009 and her life expectancy is two to five years. So we're going to open up the hive here and take a look inside and see what's going on. And we're going to open the observation hive and put the girls back. So this is the hive here. We're going to just give a quick smoke of pine needles is what we have in our smoker. This is our smoker here. We take the pine needles, we put it inside, and we'll just open up the hive here. See the girls hard at work. Whoops. Right inside here. We're going to just set this box top down. If you can see here, there isn't any honey on this frame. There's absolutely nothing on this frame. This is a Pirco frame. Here's our next frame. Oops. And again, this frame has no honey on it, and it has limited wax that's been built out on it. I've been feeding the girls for the last week, and we have a feeding station located just on the other side. Here we have pollen inside that cell there. You can see that's pollen. And you can see the liquid inside there is nectar that they are currently storing. There's just a little bit of brood there. Those are baby bees that are waiting to be born inside of there. We'll turn this right around and we'll let you see the other side of this frame. There you can see a bee who just came in with a lot of pollen. Those hind leg sacs where she carries that pollen, that's called the corbicula. And the corbicula is a little pouch that she has in which she puts the pollen in there and brings the pollen back and uses that pollen to feed during the winter months. But predominantly they use that pollen in order to feed and rear their young in the early spring, so they need to make sure that they have enough to survive the winter. You can see there is lots of pollen inside these cells here. And these are our girls hard at work. There's no boy bees in here at this time of year. Boys eat far too much honey and consume too much food, so the girls get rid of them right around the beginning of September. And then they will reproduce. The queen will reproduce boy bees again in the early, early part of the spring. And the boys are back in production and present again, usually around the middle of July. 
So that's our hive, that's our honey situation. You can see the glistening, shiny product in there. Well, that's nectar, or at this point in time, probably sugar water that I've been feeding the girls. They're currently storing it. It's at a moisture content of about 94%. They will reduce that moisture content all the way down to 17%. And when that moisture content reaches 17%, well, then that it will be honey. And they will cap that off and make it available to themselves for later in the season. So we're going to put this frame back in. Now these girls are pretty docile right now at this point in time. You can see they're flying, but they're not too aggravated. They're here fanning their pheromones there so you can see. I want to make sure we don't pinch the girls as we pick up this frame and see how heavy it is. Oh my goodness, doing this with one hand is a little difficult, I can tell you that right now. So see this pattern there? We'll move the girls out of the way. All of that is brood. Those are baby bees inside there that are waiting to be born. That's that brownish looking covering there on the top. Those are young bees. They're all inside there. They're waiting to be born. And they're probably wondering where their queen is. And she's right there in that box like I told you. So we are going to 